Hello again, uh, this is Ben, and uh, we're going to take a look at another one of my uh, garage projects here. As usual, I've got my assistant, Anthony, here with me. Hello. Say hello. And uh, we're going to take a look at some homemade hydraulic cylinders that I made. Um, I've been uh, fascinated by hydraulics for a really long time. They're, they're, they're really interesting systems, and when I got my uh, miniature lathe over here, it occurred to me that I could possibly build one on it. So I did and um, we're going to take a look at it. Now I am just going to show the cylinder working and go over some of the materials and processes that I use to use it. I um, don't have the equipment or the skills to really do um, the video production while I'm working on it. So I'm not going to actually build the thing in front of you guys but we'll just take a look at one that's already been built and uh, kind of discuss it. So um, the cylinder is here. I've got it, uh, let's see if we can get some good light on there. So it's uh, a 3 8 inch bore and I think uh, what the outside diameter of this part is uh, 0.7 inches, 0.70, 700 thousandths and then this is I think half inch, half inch outer diameter there and uh, again a 3 8 inch bore there. So the, um, obviously this is a composite piece, or maybe not obviously, but this is a composite piece here. My lathe is um, pretty small and I can't do a bore this long upon it. And I don't even think you could bore a diameter that small. I mean, generally you gotta be boring stuff that's kind of like a half inch or bigger. So what I've done is um, made a composite piece here with a couple different bits and um, just glued them together with epoxy. You know, I was I was kind of skeptical when I first set out upon this, but but it worked. So the different types of stocks that I used are here. This is just stuff you can get at your hardware store or whatever. So this is the one that ha that had the bore. So this is just regular old aluminum uh, pipe from from a from a hardware store. And then this, uh, you won't find this at your hardware store, but I got this from a from a scrapyard, just a, like one inch aluminum aluminum bar stock. And then again, this this was from the junkyard. You won't you won't find this probably at your hardware store, but this is stainless steel hex stock that I used to make some of the fittings on the cylinder side. And then. Um, quarter inch stainless steel I'm running out of this so I only have this little bit but quarter inch stainless steel for the for the cylinder rod and then um, the last thing that I got was the o-ring kit to to build some seals for for it so and I'm not gonna take it apart but I, what I kinda like about this design is that it can be overhauled you know it's got a head here that you can unbolt and open up and you know replace the o-rings or or clean it or, or do whatever you know so it's not it's not a one-time th deal you can you could open it up and, and overhaul it which is great so the and again I'm not going to open it but I'll show you the kind of the design for the what would you call it the piston the part that's connected to the rod that goes goes up and down in here that that blocks the cylinder from either side is um, essentially like this. This is from a bigger one that I was making that I messed up the bore for. So, so one of these is just connected onto the rod, and um, it's just got you know two grooves in it and a and a hole through it, so you can connect it to the rod. And the uh, you know the grooves are fairly precisely placed, and the O-rings are on there. And the rod was you know like has a shoulder on it and a thread and stuff, so you can connect that. And so, and so again, so there's three pieces that were made. Now, so the first there was the piece of, the piece of hollow stock, the, the pipe that was here. And then the, 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 the end of it, the, the sealed end um, was made from one piece of that aluminum bar stock, solid stock. And then the other one was made up there. And then this is just a yoke that it's just sitting, as stocks that it's sitting in so that it'll just stay in place while we're playing with it. And um, so, so these parts were all machined up on the lathe, and I just simply glued them together with, with two-part epoxy. It worked great. Um, I also want to point out some of this, you know, this uh, flange that's on the end here. I machined this on the lathe and uh, 
got you know got a nice radius milled on it, got some angles and the notches so that it can be connected to something and did a similar kind of thing here. Um, now, I had picked up one of these guys. I think I got this on eBay. This is a small rotary table that I picked up uh, on eBay. I actually had it shipped over here from India. It was pretty inexpensive, but it's a nice little rotary table, and I built this block that um, I can use to affix it to the cross slide. So you take this whole thing off, put that up over here, and then get the uh, you know mill in the get the end mill in the spindle, and you can um, use it to to mill your radius. So that's actually what I built this this stock for, is to bolt the stock onto the rotary table. Take this part off, and then there's a, a T slot table here. Bolt that thing onto here, and um, turn it. You know, get it positioned over here, and turned it to um, to mill that radius on there. So that was how I built, um, so that was how I, I milled these radiuses here and here to build these nice little pieces to connect the thing off to, to other things. And so, okay, so le and let me talk about how we're going to power this up. So first of all, I don't have a pump yet. Eventually I'm going to try to get like maybe an old oil pump from a car or maybe just an old hydraulic motor from a junkyard or something and try to connect it up. But for now what I've done is... I'm just using this um, oil pressurizing system that I built. I built this one for the lathe to uh, to um, use as kind of a, a ghetto cooling coolant system for for cutting, especially doing parting. That really helps for doing parting on the lathe. And um, I know, I know, I should be using you know real coolant, um, but I'm. I don't know where to buy it or or what it what it is or anything. So I'm just using common motor oil to to as a coolant for my lathe and that's originally what this what this gizmo was built for so I've got um, air pressure coming in off my air compressor in here and then the vessel is just filled with with common motor oil um, I got a uh, a valve there that I can use to refill it and the the air pressurizes the oil and then the oil come out over this thing um, and if you remove the hose, I can just kind of position this to just spray oil on my on whatever I'm cutting on the lathe. But in this case, I'm just using it to test this thing because, um, like I said, I don't have a pump. So, so we've got you know air coming in over here at 100 pounds per square inch, pressurizing the oil that's in there, and then that's coming off to our whole um, valve and hydraulic cylinder. So the valve, this is I didn't make this. I'm not that good yet. But this is a little. Um, gosh, we gotta get some light on here. This is a nice little valve that I purchased from a company called Clippard that um, makes all kinds of stuff like this. So this is a really nice piece. wasn't too expensive. Ordered it on their website. And um, it's, uh, I believe they called it a five-directional valve. So it's, a five, so it's got three positions on it, on the, the button there. There's, you know, up, in the middle, and down, which will either... Um, you know, make fluid, uh, it, there's two sets of ports, you know, and for each pair, depending on how you position the valve, the fluid will go this way, that way, or that way, or that way, which lets us uh, pressurize the double acting cylinder. So you can see, yeah, I mean, there's two ports on it, it's a double acting cylinder. Oh, and these are the, the fittings that I machined out of that, out of that stainless steel stock. So, and then actually, so I went over the design of of the piston, would you call that a piston? The plunger or the piston that's in there. But I actually have a similar design in the head. So the head has got um, some some grooves milled inside in the inner diameter that just like this take um, O-rings that are fitted on the inside of that. And I tried to do two of them but I actually messed it up. So I think there's actually only one of them in there now. I'd like to do another try. Of and get two of them in there. So that's what seals the uh, the uh, rod against the head is that there's a there's O-rings in there. So there's no you know no Teflon or plastic or anything fancy. I think real ones use uh, oh shoot I'm I'm struggling to remember what they call the gasket that they use on these real ones. But um, they use one that's more of like a it's kind of got like a V shape going down so that the pressure compresses it against the against the rod, but um, 
I have no idea where, where I'd purchase something like that, so I'm just kind of slumming it with my O-rings. So, I think, I think that's a good overview of how I built all this stuff. Um, what do you think, Anthony? You want to come over and grab the camera and uh, keep it pointing kind of like just like that? And I will um, open up the valves and, and work the, the clipper valve and we can take a look at this. All right. Thanks. So that's what we want to keep it on right there. Right. So we'll just open this to get some pressure going here. And actually, I think I need to check the compressor to make sure that's open too. Yeah, it is. So let's see. There it goes. And it's actually getting stuck at the top. But I think, you know, for the most part, it works pretty well. It doesn't leak. The valve works fine. I actually forgot to um, make a stopper that would go right here that would keep it from keep the plunger or the piston from getting stuck against the end of this fitting or and or covering the port. So next time I open it up, I'm just going to go ahead and build one of those things. But you can see it's kind of getting stuck at the top of the travel, even though it's a, even though I push the valve. I need to kind of slap it a little bit to come back down, and that might get fixed with higher pressure too. I don't know, but I'm going to have to try it out. So. So you can see it works pretty well, and um, it's it's pretty strong. I've, I've I've set it up horizontally and used it to push that that rotary table that we were just looking at, and it, it did fine. It was able to push it across the table. So I think this is a this is a pretty cool little toy here. I'm I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with it, but I think it'll be fun to uh, to try to complete the system by getting a pump and getting the electronics going to. Uh, to detect uh, the pressure and you know activate the pump and do all this and maybe uh, connect it to something, build a little miniature backhoe or something. Maybe I'll build a squirrel-sized backhoe or use it to crack walnuts or something. But uh, so that's it. So pretty cool. Very pleased with this valve that I got from Clipper. We'll see if maybe one of these days I'll get good enough to machine something like that myself. But I think this is a very nice little cylinder in a very cool system and definitely a testament to the uh, to the 7 by 10 lathe and, and everything that you can do with it. So that's it. I hope you guys like it. What do you think, Anthony? Any questions? Hey, no. No? Pretty cool, huh? Alright, well that's it. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time. Bye. Bye, Anthony. Thanks.